podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. I'm a dad walk on. Man, hey, man. Check it, man. Look out, man. We down here in H Town, man. And hey, man, we got somebody that's very, very special. This guy right here, man, he been putting it down, man. Uh, them sounds that you hear, man. This guy right here <laughs> is the one that'll do that for you. This yeah. guy right here might even be on the wheels of steel, is what we used to yeah. call it, man. Check it, man. My boy Harvey is in the building. Yes, man. Man, yes, man, yes. I'm Harvey Love to come down, right King, super it. producer. You know what I'm saying? Called by many, so I'm here and accounted for. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yes, sir. Man, you know my you. My honor and my pleasure. You one of them guys, man. They say I had to talk to you, so that's what God did. <laughs> God did, you know. That's what these niggas doing now. The God been doing it, but they just Absolutely. all of a sudden and got a handle of right. God did. Right. No, God done, nigga. You know what yeah, I'm talking about? Still doing. Woo! How about that part? Still doing. Yeah. Hey, you know what? If he don't do nothing else, he done enough for me. Absolutely. Real talk. Absolutely. Um, so uh, when you uh, when you think about the Houston sound, when you think about that sound that me and Lil Kiki talked about when I was over there, and he say, Dallas, you know, they just never did find their sound. And uh, they and ESG told me the same thing when he came. Uh, Dallas, it was just, we found our sound early on. You also had to have a beat. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. You hear me? Sure. You also had to have a beat that sounded somewhat a Houston sound. Right, right. They talking about the cadence of the music, but 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 the cadence of the voice. But I'm talking about the sound of the music. Absolutely, but I I get what E and Kiki are saying, but at the same time, Dallas was always able to come up with a hit, though. You could always get a hit record from Dallas. You know what I'm saying? Always. So you know, yeah, yeah. I've That's been, hard. I've been to, been to Dallas several times. They be jigging with it. They, they know how yeah, to rock. Yeah, it, yeah, know? yeah. And you're going to rock when you get there. A lot of songs I didn't even know, you know, existed, but it, it rock in that area. And it's, I mean, they be hit songs from them, you know what I'm wow. saying? For real, real, real Man, jammers. So, so just, just, just go down through there a little bit with him. Let's figure out who this guy is. We don't even know who this is. He could be an imposter. Maybe this ain't Harvey. <laughs> Maybe this is somebody else, you know? Because, you know, Harvey is a name that when I thought about him, I'm like, damn, I know he must have really been kind of like, damn, Harvey. Well, when, the, when, the, when the storm came, it was like, man, you know, that had to be something. Well, let me tell you what separates me from other Harveys. My name is Harvey Love, Harvey L-U-V. And therefore, the reason why I say that is because there's 4,000 Harveys in the United States. I already checked. He didn't hmm. count it to Harveys. <laughs> when was the last time you checked? You know, there are more being born every day. Absolutely. <laughs> and no, you're right. No, you're right. We, we just embarked on eight, 8 billion people worldwide now. Mm -hmm. So you are right about mm -hmm. that. So it may be way more than 4,000 because that was, you know, well, I guess a couple of years ago. Right. right? Oh, yeah. 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 There's so a lot more now. I just don't think that people just run around here still, you know, call themselves Harvey, but <laughs> it is what it is. It you know? is what it I'm is. I'm from a long a lot of harvest already. <laughs> so let's get it. So you're born and raised in Houston? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What part? Yes, sir. What part? Uh, Houston. I'm in the third ward area okay. as far as born, but I'm raised in Hiram Clark. I left uh, third ward when I was, what, 12 years old? And you, I've been in Hiram Clark. You on Scott Street? What? <laughs> yeah. I live off of Scott and McGowan. See what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Scott Street, Scott third story. Ward. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Man, yeah. how was it coming up over you know, there early on? Like, you hear stories about the third, the fifth. How was it on Scott Street? Because that, that well, street had a reputation. Well, it, it's historic, you know. I mean, you can get to so many different, you know, uh, institutions off of Scott Street. <laughs> you know Man. what I'm saying? You know, you can, you, I mean, just so many ways. I mean, Yates is off of what, like Scott and Sampson. Okay. So, you know, it's it's very, very, uh, there you go. it's very, very popular. As far yeah. as, you know, that strip, you know, yeah. whatever McGowan is, Emancipation is, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it's, you know, a lot of historic streets where a lot of things happened back in the day. But I say that because that's where a lot of my fun growing up was or whatever, but I was always too young. Now, wow. I was able to really retro, you know, really recognize it in retrospect when I look back and say, man, there was a lot going on, you know, and all of that in Third Water or whatever. But in Hiram Clark, I got to bring that up. We have our streets as well, so we got. It seems like you like Hiram Clark better than Third Ward. Never, you know, I like them both the same. <laughs> I, I, let you me say that because that? I have a Never. lot of people. Real talk, because what it is, I don't like, and I don't like Third Ward better than Hiram Clark either, because mm -hmm. you know, I was born in, born in Hiram Clark, but like I said, you know, Hiram, Third Ward. No, you were born me. in Third Ward. Yeah, Third Ward. Yeah. I was born in Third Ward, but Hiram Clark raised me. Right. And so you know, I. 
they that, that's where I got my bones, and they you know they actually adopted me as one of their own. So mm-hmm. when people say, "Hey, where you from?" I'm from Hiram Clark because they you know I was just regular Harvey Kelly in Third Ward, mm-hmm. you know whatever. I was DJing and stuff like that. I've been DJing since I was eight years old. Eight years so, old. Yeah. Who turned you on to DJing? Well, my mother put me in uh, DJing because uh, let me how I can explain this. My mother had a had a club. Your mother had a club. Mm-hmm. My mother had a club and had nobody to babysit me. You had a hip mom. Yeah, she she owned the club. So I would sleep on the pool tables or whatever. I didn't have any. I didn't have any. What kind any of club was it? Like center. a dance club a or juke a joint? Juke? Oh, That's okay. exactly what it was. Okay. I know what a That's juke joint is. It okay. had a juke box. That's it. <laughs> okay, it's a juke joint. It was a juke. Did she run it with your daddy? Uh, yes, she did. She cooked okay, some. She actually both both named it after my father. Okay. Mm-hmm. What was the name of it? Kelly's Correll. But but did y'all have some uh, what some fish and stuff in there to eat? Did we didn't have, have no food in there? Yeah, she served food. My mother was a professional cook, too. Yeah, that's cat so, food. She had some catfish in there? Uh, she had everything. Man, I'm getting hungry as hell. <laughs> <laughs> she had everything. And uh, she, we didn't have any babysitter, you know, for me, you know. And so I would have to sleep on the pool table. She had an extra pool table in the back she wasn't using or whatever. I had to sleep on the pool table to be out the way of the grown-ups and all that after I come home from school and all that. And I didn't go uh, home. I went to my mother's club, you know. You must so, have been the oldest one. I was the only one. Oh, so you know you're the saying? only child. I'm an only child. Ooh. I have two sisters, but they never lived with me. So I grew up the only child. Older or younger? Older and younger. Oh. I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the middle, and I'm adopted to the mother that had the club. I'm okay. adopted to her. So where's your real mom? Well, my biological mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. She's still real mom. Already. <laughs> yeah, where's no, your biological? No, I just always say that. No, that's the thing that I yeah. teach other people. I was like, you know, you're biological. You know. Well, the thing is, uh, she's still around me. I talk to her all the time, every day. Bring up, so you day, knew her day. while you were growing up? I did. I, well, I actually met her uh, later on. How old were you when you met her? Um, Probably about, I mean, I probably about what? Five, six. Okay, okay, like okay. That Not that later on. I thought you were just going to say like teenager. No, we were always all together. In, okay, you know. So my my deal was, you know, she she's a very good lady. I mean, my mother, you know, had you know like helped us both out, like brother mm-hmm. and sister for for a minute. You know, so it 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 would turn out it was a good situation. That's good. Yeah, I know a lot of people situation. who do that and end up adopting the kids because sometimes they'll they knew I don't know what your your biological mom situation was, right? But right. a lot of people that I know have um, done that. It was usually because the person was on drugs and couldn't get to That's take what, care of right, right, the right. child, so they went ahead and took the child, right. and raised them and ended up falling in love and then adopting them, right. Well, so what? in this situation, uh, in this situation, it wasn't it wasn't like that. Okay. And, and glory be to God for that. But it wasn't like that. Uh, she was young. You know, she was only 15 years older. When than she I. had you. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So my mother, uh, long story short, on that, my mother adopted me. You know, and raised me. Um, and I feel like you know, I mean, beat me like nobody's business. You know, I mean, like put that belt. You know, what I'm saying like, but. I thank God for every lick because I've never been in any trouble. She raised me. I mean, like, I mean, to be, you know, just honorable, respectful. You know, like right now, I mean, like, I don't care who is who it who it is, a man, woman, child, anybody. I'm gonna hold the door and wait for you to get there. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna hold the door and you know, open the door for people to get in the car or whatever. Because those are things that just just things that I was taught. You know, I was taught as a youngster. You know, and I used to really get real spankings for that. So and the blessing that you have to me. have a father in the house as well, because you know a lot of people Absolutely. don't have that. Statistics of a black, you know, man or black person right. is the father is not in the home; is a split exactly. family. Yeah, yeah, and they, I mean, you know, different circumstances that make that that way that is too. You Listen, know, I know man. that's a whole different deal, but I just a reason I, for I that. I commend you, man. Uh, you, 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 you come from a, a, a situation where God. He made a way for y'all to know. Way. Absolutely. And, you know, you said, you, you mentioned God earlier. We always, I, I look at that in the conversation. So even in your voice, you can hear that you was raised uh, either around somebody that was spiritual. Um, you can hear it in your voice. My mother. 
You hear what I just yeah, said? Yeah, absolutely. I and, know and it. I don't have I'm to. Grateful. I don't have to. That's how I know I can try the spirit. Mm -hmm. The words say you have to have a spirit of discernment. It talks about that in First Corinthians chapter twelve. Um, it talks about uh, the gifts of the spirit. Exactly. And that's something that I look at like I can tell just by the way that you know the tree by the fruits that it bear. So when I'm listening to you talk and I hear your dialect, I can hear God in you. Absolutely. God gives us all that, but it's, you know, it's up to you to pray for, you know, to be able to recognize that. I just you thank know, God for you, brother. Gives, I mean, for, for, you know, that's what people don't understand. Everybody don't get the same um, interview. Right. Gotcha. God gotcha. tell me what to say. Absolutely. I'm toned in. I'm tapped in with God. Yeah. So yeah, when I yeah. say, if you need to hear something to say, we got to get it together, mm -hmm. he tell me what to talk about on that. If he, if, he, if he tell me to tell somebody, to let's keep going, because you got it going on in me, then I tell you that too. Oh, man. You feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I yeah, thank God works. for just having the spirit of discernment. You, you know what I mean? So I, when you think about just the, the music, though, did you, how did you first, like, start just like playing the music well and. this is what happened like i was saying about the djing back when i you know um uh, not dating myself but you know pretty much my you know i'm public knowledge when i started djing i was like i said i was eight years old because i was fascinated by the dj see like today's in today's clubs djs are every day i mean it's you have a dj that's that's how the music is played in clubs and if you don't have your ipad i guess or something like that but Back then, it was jukebox through the week, live DJs on weekends. Mm. So on the weekends, I was just so fascinated by this DJ named Wild Child. Okay. That would he shout out Wild Child? Yeah, is yes, he paid? Is he still living? I, I think that Wild Child passed. Man, R.I.P. Yeah, to Wild absolutely. Child. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, you gotta you gotta think this was like forty, you know, what, yeah. forty years. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my deal is, Wild Child would be DJing, and I was just so fascinated the way he could just make the records play himself as opposed to just sitting back watching this this machine play the records you know he playing them you know and what by request and he talking to the crowd and they dancing mm. and responding to what he's saying and all that i wanted that and so my mother got him to teach me hey teach my boy that whatever because it was going to give me something to do i wouldn't be so bored after doing my homework mm, and all yeah. that kind of stuff like that so once i got into that or whatever i used to have to stand on milk crates little, little square it's milk hard, crates, hard. to reach the table that's hard once I did that, by the time I was like 10 or 11 or whatever, you know, I started uh, this because this is just before I moved to Hyde Clark. So I'm about 10 years old. They turning me loose sometimes for an hour. Or whatever, and this is at the, the club. I, at the club. At the my club. My friends couldn't even come in. That's why a lot of my friends right. never saw me DJ or whatever because they were too young to come in the club. It's almost like this is after school tutoring. <laughs> That's exactly. really what it was like. And so th and this is, uh, I'm giving you the full circle how, it, you know, it made me popular and mm -hmm. it, it had put me out there and blew me up like that. Well, when I was DJing, all of a sudden, people started coming from far and near to see this kid that knows how to play all these songs. And I'm like, come on, y'all, everybody get up. You're talking to him. I'm talking to him. So and everybody starts saying, like, man, look at this little kid. And how little old was on. this? I'm, I was 11 by, by okay. at that time. That's hard. So by, t by the time I turned 12, I was the only DJ. Watch out when you know, DJing there anymore. Hold on, was, was your mama paying you? Uh, uh, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> She paying me by letting me sleep, sleep you know what I'm saying, and, eat, and taking me to school, feed me, and all That's that. That's hard. Yeah, so uh, she doing it or whatever, and you know, I see how that helped her a lot too because she got more clientele because right. they wanted to see this this little phenom kid doing that. And plus, like you know, like you just said, you know, she wouldn't have to pay. Watch she wouldn't out. have to pay him. Yeah, exactly. No more. That's why I like and then I'm left. drawing a crowd too. That's why you know. She's yeah. Wild Child, he be in there talking about his money. My son already doing. She really pulled the play on yeah, Wild Child. Right. She pulled the play on that nigga. Pull the play. Teach him the game. That's, that's they, a lot that's of corporations. A, no, that's corporate. That. That's, what, that's, that's corporate what corporate do. do. Right, right. So she, so was, she was hard, right. man. Your mama's right. something else. You know, and I've worked in corporate America. Yeah, and that, you know, they do that. The training, the new, the new guy, you know you're you training your replacement. replacement. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, believe that. You know what I'm saying? So same thing. So I, it happened that way. And then by this time, you know, because I'm going to Ryan. I'm going to Ryan and I'm in talent shows and stuff like that. Uh, Ryan is the middle school. Okay. Um, like a lot of people that went to Yates, they came from uh, Ryan Middle School. So I'm at Ryan, I'm in talent shows, I'm DJing the parties there. Graduated from Ryan, went to Madison. Now, okay. this time I moved to Hiram Clark. Now I'm the main DJ, even in ninth grade, for all of the 
Madison parties, the homecomings, the, all this kind of stuff like that. And my name is Harvey Kelly, but I, I started, you know, like I'm DJ Harvey Love, DJ Harvey Love, whatever. And so I started DJing for the, the, uh, the teachers at their private parties at their own house. Mm-hmm. And they would trust me. I never took nobody's business back to school and all this kind of stuff like that. Not that they were doing anything wrong. They wasn't doing anything wrong. But they saw that, man, he's like a little grown-up. He can tr- you can trust him. He, the, yeah. he knows how to play the right music. Yeah. All the teachers start hiring me on the weekends and stuff for their own parties at home. And I never would come back to school saying, hey, I did, you know, Miss Anderson's work. Or Miss, you know, this, you know, I never would do that. You, yeah, know, I, I never, you trustworthy. Yeah I, was, yeah, I never would say I DJ for a teacher. It never got back to school. So when they did that, they wouldn't, you know, by them knowing me like that, they would start calling me Harvey Love by, by, my, by my stage name versus my real name. Yeah. I'm putting it on my test papers, everything. That's why a lot of people don't even know my name was Harvey Kelly. Well, now that they got, I got, you know, we got Facebook and all this kind of stuff like that, they know it and whatever, but it's been Harvey Love, Harvey Love, Harvey Love. And that popularity blew me up in school and that's how I got it. So, Man, yeah. so, so you so, get, when did you first uh, start, uh, you know, uh, producing the, 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 the tracks. Music, the tracks. This, this is what happened. That's a uh, big mellow. Have yeah, you heard, I heard okay, of big okay, mellow. Okay, that's what put me in the game professionally. So because he and I would, you know, he was the rapper, I was the DJ at all the Madison Talent shows. We got together and got, you know, went professional, signed with rap a lot after we after we graduated. How old were you? So uh, after graduated, eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, I was nineteen. I was okay. yeah, I was eight. I graduated seventeen, turned eighteen next month. I was nineteen years old. Okay. Signed yeah, the rap a when, lot. when I signed the rap a lot, I was on there when you like me, Scarface, you know Willie D, all of us, you know what I'm saying? You know, Mr. Lee, Boys, Big Mike. Wasn't Mr. Lee there with y'all? He wasn't there yet. I don't think uh, Lee was yet. there yet. No, Lee wasn't there yet. Really? Uh. Uh-uh. So that was early on. It was early. I don't. I don't believe Lee was there. You yet. was early with mm-hmm. it. It was like yeah, yes indeed, yeah, yeah. We so you was there when uh, uh, I never Mr. seen Mike? a man cry until I seen a man Absolutely. die. Scarface, you know, me, me and Scarface are tight, tight, tight. He. So he uh, sung us that song. I, I can tell you what, we were like in his car and he was just letting us hear the demo tape of, of that song or whatever. The get, I mean, like I remember like with, with uh, Mind Playing Tricks on me, that was a song that was gonna be uh, like some solo stuff that he was doing, but it fit the Ghetto Boys better yeah. as a group. How did it, who, they, who they, came up with that? With that little, with that little Jack? Face. Meaning said that it fit the whole Ghetto No, no, board. no, I, I don't know how they, I guess they got together and that would. You see what I'm saying? Face, okay, we were at a club called Boomerang. Scarface let me hear that him rapping that song by himself. Now Will, you know Willie D and, and that's and why Bush he had two verses involved, on but there. We just heard absolutely. So Willie D and Bush was, was probably involved. They probably wrote, all wrote the song together, or whatever. But when Face let us hear it, it was just him by himself. And so I'm like, man, that's amazing. That song was amazing. You knew it was good. It, it, oh man, I already knew uh, about the you know because for me from DJing, yeah, that's you had the air I knew that music. was a war. Yeah, I already knew about the war uh, sample that he used and everything. I already knew what, you know, it was just like, wow, wow. And the Isaac Hayes, the Isaac Hayes and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, that's what it was, the, the uh, Isaac Hayes. So it was like, man, it was so, it was amazing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we, you know, I'm like, wow, man, that music right there. He, he took that music and so made this. How did you, how did you, when you heard the, uh, the, the final version, how did you feel? It was crazy. It was you crazy. Like, what it, was the way, hell? it was way. It was way above what I could have anticipated. Yeah, because when you think about it, was crazy. The way B Willie of, D is. I don't monster. know. People don't want Willie D wrote that verse for for Bushwick. Yeah, yeah. And but he, he's it a monster. Him. God, it fit him. Willie D is a monster in that studio. Man, that nigga said. Uh, that nigga said. Uh, Fifth Ward is is a spot where niggas get shot. I remember wholesale cocking every block. And I, the niggas start shit, but they don't start it with Bill. Like, like this man wrote this, and man. Bill. What Bill wasn't from here, was he? Bill was from Bushwick. He Brooklyn. was from New York. He was from New Bushwick, York. Bushwick, Brooklyn. Yeah. But he came here, and he, we, Willie D, started pushing him into this culture with the way he was writing, right? Man. Well, Bill was actually there, with, you know, with Johnny C and Reddy Red. You know, Bill was there in jukebox. Okay. Bill was there before everything. So he was yeah. there all the time. He was there all the time. Yeah. He like so he there. was from the south, really. Yeah, he we I, I might as well he was here. Yeah, man. But Bill was nice. Bill was nice too. I mean, like he would he's just a such a such a performer. R. I. P. to Bill. His performance, man, was amazing. I mean, 
if you know you if you don't wouldn't if you didn't see or witness the, these shows that the ghetto boys were, were doing as a oh you wouldn't goodness, even miss a treat oh my goodness we were we on the label with them we we on the show we opening up we doing this you know me and Big Mello whatever Mello had an amazing role. He he would be with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, right there. Okay, okay. He would be with us, you know, because it was Big Mellow and Bonar Productions, Bonar Productions, Peach and Big Mellow, whatever. That was our group. He would finish our show, go back in the dressing room, change, and come back out. You know, saying either with the Ghetto Boys or with Scarface. You know, he wouldn't pretty much be together, but he'd be like Scarface is hype man and Scarface doing a like a show by you know a solo because he was so, so Scarface was a solo artist as well. Yeah, yeah, you know he saying? was. So so Mellow. Was Scarface's hype man, mm. so he was really working. That, that, I mean, that Melo got to be probably the mo, one of the most talented uh, artists I've ever worked with in my life. Wow! So ever? He, what you mean? He, ever? Even ever. more talented because than he Scarface? Seen, he seems well. Now too I'm not different. Gonna, too uh, different. Well, I'm not going to ever say he can rap better than Scarface because Scarface is my fave. He my goat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying so. I'm not going to say you know him. And, it's two people that I have: Scarface and K. Reno. I mean, and I happen to know both of them like like this or whatever. Where does Pimp C fall in all of that? Pimp C is hey, a that's different, but that's different though. No, no, no. Hey, you know, I, I I get you right, but Pimp C was a, a beast too, because you know all of us hung together. Right. Pimp C and Bun hung with rap a lot just as well. You know, you, they inj would be on you injecting Pimp C into something that they would be because he us. was, but he was jive though, and he was they were under under he was he, under different record label, and then they was in Port Arthur, which is like. What, 45, uh, 50 minutes away from Houston, That's right? true. That's true. But so, at, yet and still, even though, you're right about that, but he still would hang out with us. Correct. I you get know, it. We would I go, get it. We would go on shows and stuff like that. We did. We even did shows in, in PA. Yeah. And so, P Pimp C and Bond, they would be right there with us. We were cool. We did shows in Austin together, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, we did a whole but lot I'm of trying to shows. get this rap a lot spill right now. I don't know I why she injected Pimp C in it. Because I'm going there with you. <laughs> okay, that's cool. But right now, I want to talk about this Scarface and this whole, the the, the legendary move that Jay, because we can't leave Lil Jay out. You know Never. what I'm saying? Never. So, you know, all of this Never. stuff is working together. And, Look, and so, Dead. I mean, like, man, really. so you see what I'm He's saying? Like for me, my whole career, I mean, post rap a lot. Wow. You know, so how did you me, first me, 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 me Jay? Jay well, but I got cool with Jay through Mellow. You know, man, you know, Jay and Mellow was real tight. Me okay. and Mellow was real tight or whatever. But that would, all, you know, with us being in the group, that would always be around Jay. Jay is just 100 dude. He's just real. I mean, and a lot of times they don't know. They think that Jay is just this CEO putting the money behind it, and and you know, and he good. No, Jay involved. Did we, when they be in the studio, Jay in there. Now you know, say, hey man, no, 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 bring bring that back. Come on, you say this like this. Come on, man, look, you know, come on, you can come harder. Than he come technical. On. He he in there. He tell ghetto boys, like, yeah, them ghetto boys albums and all that kind of stuff. Like Jay was there. He wouldn't. It wasn't like he called into the studio to see how everything went. No, Jay putting in the work. Wow. And that's what I'm saying. People just don't, didn't know that part about Jay. Jay in there. Like, you what, could, time, what time we gotta go? Oh, okay, I'll be there. You could tell because no, he, he would come in there. But when he would say, "Oh yeah, yeah he, oh yeah, that's on the intro." He in there, like yeah, he in there. He, he in there. He, he, he watching what's going on. He, he want to know how this and whole. And then if he listen to some songs, like, man, I think we can just. I, mean, I think I don't, I don't know, man. I think we can go back on that one, man. And I'm talking about songs that's getting ready to get wrapped up. Jay, listen to and mm, I think love we can go music. Back. And, he was in there. He That's what I'm music. saying. Yeah, he wasn't no just CEO like, oh, okay, y'all ready to eagle the money? Okay, and chunk that it. wasn't no. him. He was hands on, and so I mean, like with us and everybody, he wouldn't. This, you know, Jay wanted to hear it, and and not that we got to just do stuff albums for him, but he wanted to be involved. Wow. He loved music so much, he wanted to be with it. You know, he yeah, Jay was on that hip hop. He was on his hip hop. So hard. what was and a, we like that? You know, what I'm saying we we like we used to love the fact that Jay what was the what was the biggest like 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 uh, thing song that you produced during that time during the nineties? Man, the uh, biggest one. Uh, the so biggest, the most. Okay, well let me tell you how it happened. I was just DJing. Remember, I'm a DJ. So I was just DJing. I idolized. Uh, Crazy C, who was in the group with us. Okay. He was the actual producer for the group. Okay. But since I was so popular, you know, you know, from the schools and from everything going around in the city and all that, people was thinking I was doing those tracks okay. a lot of times or whatever. Now, this is what actually happened. 
I was so fascinated because once I see people doing stuff that I like, whatever, I study them. It's like just like in the corporate America, they call it job shadowing. That's right. So I was, oh, I would watch, you know, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, crazy mm -hmm, see, and mm -hmm. he was so good. I idolized him. I was like, man, I want to learn how to do that. Whatever. I loved it so much, and he's such a good dude. I patted my whole life behind crazy see. Yeah. You know, he like he God fearing, God loving. I mean, he does everything. He does tracks. He DJ everything. You know, radio station. I wanted to be on the radio. You know, That's hard. everything. You know, say everything mm -hmm. he did. I want to do so. I asked him, you know, like, to teach me. I wanted to learn, you know. So he, I, I wanted to learn so bad. I went and got the same exact keyboard yeah. that he did because I wanted to. You know, I didn't even know how to turn my keyboard on. I didn't know the power, uh, the power cord. Wow. You know the, how to connect that. I didn't know the button was in the back. I didn't know it back then. It was floppy disk. I didn't know how to use the floppy disk. Nothing wow. to show you how novice, you know, how much of a novice I was. Correct. You know when it when it came to producing, he he took me by the hand and taught me and taught me and taught me to whereas he was. Doing the things that was my, he said, I can teach you how to how to put it together, but I can't teach you how to think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't teach you how to feel what you what you feel. He said, what you feel, whatever. The, and so I had to take what I feel. And I knew a lot of stuff that would make people dance and move or whatever because I was a DJ or whatever. I'm like, I studied songs that make, just even today. Like if I'm DJing in the club and I see a, you know, how they rock into a certain song, I'm like, okay, I got to go do a, do a song that's making them drums pop like that. I mean, you know. Cause I know the elements of a song just like a chef when he eating something he can tell what's in it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a with a with a producer I can tell what kind of uh, instruments was used, you know, that, when a, to make a hit song. It's funny, uh, B King said the same thing. Yeah, he I said can tell exactly he, he could tell exactly what he hear hear songs different because of the way his musical background. Ex exactly, is. that's exactly right. You know what I'm saying? Because you can you can tell what's going into it the, by the rhythm of it. It doesn't necessarily have to be the speed of it. You just speed up the hi hats in the song. And that'll make it move. You know, it's just uh, just little, little little techniques and strategies that you can do with in a beat. You know, it's in a lot of, I like the kind of song. I like 808 a lot, doom, doom, doom. But I study Dr. Dre a lot. Dr. Dre don't use a lot of 808s. The boom, boom. You don't hear that a lot from Dr. Dre. You hear a knock that doom, doom, doom. That's what you're going to hear from Dr. Boom, ah, boom, boom, ah. That, that's like... You know, that's what Dr. Dre uses because it's gonna hit. It's gonna sound like gorillas in your trunk, mm -hmm. as opposed to just your trunk vibrating. You're gonna hear a lot of hum bass. What you know did what you saying? think about? Because we talked about UGK earlier, um, when when Pimp C first started pushing that music, and he was when you first hear uh, uh, Super Super Tight, but the, the one before that, the first one. What did you think about? Uh, uh, the, yeah, to tell me some goods and all that. I was totally amazed by Pimp C. It messed me up. Even when he was doing like stuff like big for Big Mike, that hoes and things. And yeah. And I was sitting next to him when he when he was in the Fly studio. Hoes and things. Yeah. yeah. You're right, right. I was sitting next to him in digital services at the studio when he he said, "But I heard it before Big Mike." You know what I'm saying? And, and it's because I was we were in did that he sing it first or did he? He was. Oh, he just make the beat. doing the beat. Then he sung the hook. Let me ask you this, because this is a big thing me and Bobo talk about. Bobo, Bobo Luciano, shout out. He got super tight down there in Dallas too. He named his whole podcast that. Oh, wow. um, uh, when you worked around Pimp C, there's mm -hmm. a big misconception, or it may be the truth. Um, David Banner, Bobo gets pretty much upset about this all the time. Some was said that, or said that he taught Pimp C how to use a beat machine. That I don't know. He made. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to understand. Okay. How was he making his music? That you were just talking about, right? Without a beat machine, about without making beats. How, well, how do you do that? Well, how do you make the beat? Okay. Well, I can tell. I don't. I I understand exactly what you're asking. But my thing is to do. Okay, I'm not a pianist. Okay. I play good enough to have my pianist. My musicians to do what I need, you know, and they can take it to that next level, or whatever. But it starts with the idea that I give them. Correct. So, a producer is more or less a conductor of the orchestra. Just okay. Like, that's the producer, you know. Like prime example, I have people that are, I mean, like major musicians that working in the same room, you know, doing some stuff. I need them to do. I know all of their parts, but they may not know each other's. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like the bass player might not know to a certain extent what he how he want the pianist to do this or you know, or he want, you know, 
or uh, even a horn player to do this part or whatever, but I can hear a part for every one of them. I'm like, okay, in the break, I want you to come, you know, right there and you make, I'm gonna give it to me a little bit more busy right here or whatever, just to signify that this is the break and not the normal main, you know, main, you know, main verse or chorus, you know, stuff like that or whatever. This might be the bridge right there. We're gonna rise up right here on the bridge. You know, I, I know how to. I know, but how did I he make that. that fly hose in? He made that beat or how did he make yeah, that, he, produce he that the, sound? What did he do? Well, he, uh, he did the track. You know, so whatever, and he he just heard y'all. He heard what he heard to it. That's what he was hearing. You know, hearing to it, whatever. And his the way he sang hooks was amazing. The way he sang hooks was amazing. And Bun would you know Bun would even tell you that like man, I, you know, Bun doesn't have to tell me that he misses Pimp C. You can tell. In nah, we know he missing that, but I, it, it, you because know because it, it's because it, Bun is a phenomenal rapper. I mean, phenomenal artist. He's phenomenal. Bun, it's like making a, uh, it's like making a the, I mean like the best tasting cake you ever you ever you know you ever tasted in your life. It's missing the icing. Well, you got to understand, and, and that's my thing with, with that's with real. PFC, because Bun could be, I mean like we call two people, we call them cameo kings, Bun B and Three Two. Like yeah. if any one of them, you can you get you know, get a little lunch, you know, if if any one of them on your song, because they gonna tear it down, and, and uh, you know. I, I can hear Bun on anything. Like look at look at Big Pimpin. Yeah, I don't care who you are. Bun can, Bun can you know put give you that work. DJ you know Burn one down there in Atlanta said yeah. that Bun showed him a lot when it come down to his yeah. craft as well. So my thing is, but like for UG real strong UGK fans like myself, you miss that Pimp C coming with a hook, or you miss Bim Bun over a Pimp beat. You know what I'm saying? It, you miss that. Yeah. I think, like I said, we and and you see it, you see it in his interviews. I hadn't yeah. got a chance to interview him yet, but you see it. I interview Steve Bilo, I interview the Bobos, I interview, and all of them say this about the fact of how the the Pimp C, you know, the way it affected them once Pimp C passed away. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Because it affected everybody, and right. more so. Even when I interviewed uh, Julia Beverly, like it's like these people, they they it's an empty spot there, of course because of the impact that he brought to the game and to the music, you right. know what I mean? Right. And right. to their lives, but the music was a big thing because that's their careers. And, right. and, right. and for, for Bun, of course, that's a, that's, a, that's a big, empty space, man. Yeah, you can't man. replace it. Yeah. I mean, well, and because it's, it was a sound that we were so used to. Man, I loved you know, it. I loved it. I, I, like A-Ball and MJG, rock with, with both of them, you know what I'm saying? Like A-Ball and MJG. I love them more together. I know they both cold apart, but when I hear them together, it's just you wait on that one-two punch. That one-two punch. Man, it's funny it you it's funny you mentioned that because they had the verses down there in Atlanta. I was so upset about that. I wanted it to be here in Houston or somewhere in Texas. It could have been San Antonio. I wanted that thing because I knew already the room and the energy and the way it was would have been different. Right, right, absolutely. We had a lot of people. Say I was that. so, say I was that. so hurt behind yeah, yeah, it because yeah. I'm a big fan of both of them. Actually. Right, right. And I know right. Suave House was here, and right. I know, you know, I know already the history of it. You know, UGK right up the street, whether whether it be Port Arthur or here, it might as well right. be here. Right. And I, I just think it would have been so dope. And I said, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I said because people were saying, man, because I, I said it, it should have been in Houston. And they were like, no, nah, man, because that wouldn't have been fair. That's what everybody said. To, to PA. I'm like, you know what I'm nah. I say, no, nah, that's not right. Because uh, Bun was here. You know, people, you know, I know they from PA. It, I know A Baller, you know what I'm saying, MJG, you know what I'm saying, from Tennessee. Yeah, 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 yeah Tennessee, I, Memphis. Right, I, right. I know they from I know they from Memphis out there. But they but Swave House was here. That's right. It was kind of like a home away from home for both of them. That's right. That's you know right. That's they, right. They'd be in Houston. They Man, that would have been so hard. Was, I'd have been here. H-Town, they could, oh my goodness. The it would have been crazy, been crazy. wouldn't it? And then they would have made for a better verse. And shout out to Bobo. Because of the energy. I'm going to say Bobo again. You're going to tell me uh, they yeah. it was they they were so busy picking up their phones. And I'm like, man, they, niggas pick their phone up all the time. The energy wasn't off because it wasn't in Houston. I was on his butt. Well, my thing is, you can't it's hard to if you're watching energy that's not there it's hard to you know create recreate energy yeah but if you just think about it a lot of times when you you at a concert you could be anywhere at a show or something or whatever and if they lit for some reason even whether you know the music a lot you lit because you at a place that's lit yeah if you're watching something that is not really projecting energy it's hard to get crunk all by yourself. Yeah. And so that's why it, it didn't make for such a good, you know, like a, a crunk versus because you, we, wasn't, we wasn't really watching energy. I always tell other artists and, you know, like artists that I, 
I'm trying to mentor and things like that, whatever. The crowd will never be more lit than you are. So make sure you out there giving it your all when you I think I mean like if I'm out there just dead weight, just you know, just saying you know, saying lyrics to my song, whatever and all that or whatever. What they gonna get crunk for? I'm gonna I'm tell not. you something. Baby. And you knew this from being a DJ. You right. learned all of that. Well, and also I've been in this thirty years too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, I'm, I mean, I've seen all the hits and misses. Let me ask you, you know? this. I gotta, I gotta ask you this. Like when you seen it, you, you did, when you seen Bun trying to, you know, basically show homage, pay homage to Pimp again, because it, it was almost like a homage paying event for me. I, you could see that empty. He had the shirt on. But it was like, man, I know it, it was like we miss pimp. This whole thing to me is about we miss pimp C. Right, right. You talking, talking about the, 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 the free pimps? Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I'm talking about the performance, yeah, the performance, performance. at the verses. Oh, know? in the verses, right. Yeah, right, I'm right, talking about you. I'm really like still, I I can, maybe I'm just a big fan, but I'm like, right, it, it, right. it's paying, showing homage and it's paying homage to him, but uh, it, it's supposed to be a thing where they going back and forth with these songs, but right. it became a thing to me where that empty spot just meant like, dang, man, it, it well, made me feel a way. Well, you'd have got the same thing if one of them was missing too. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's so my thing is because you can't recreate, you, know, or you can't substitute for the, the attitude or whatever they would give you, or, you know, the performance that they would give, you know, Pimp would have been out there acting a fool. It would have been <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And so, it, you know, he'd have been out there lit. It would have been different. Uh -huh. It would have been crazy. You know what I'm saying? And so that can't, that can't be substituted for. You know, that you can put up as many pictures, posters, videos or whatever in the background. You can do all of that you, that you want. It still doesn't, you know, it doesn't really substitute for that. You know wow. what I'm saying? That, that what you missed. I want to ask you about, um, I want to ask you about something else. I want to try to talk about these youngsters for a minute. Okay. And I'm going to say youngsters because uh, I'm going to even start with B. King. I'm okay. going to start, all right, B. King, like okay. when you've seen him come on the scene versus when, you, you know, the way you guys originally done it, okay. um, what was your thoughts on the way he, he was Absolutely doing? love it because it takes. He was different. I love different. Yeah, I'm he try, said I in his interview, he said in his interview when he came in because he's Houston. Everybody else was, you know, screwed down, slowed up, whatever. Didn't have like a whole bunch of energy. Right. And that's why he did what he did to be different and to exactly. bring all of that in a place that didn't know nothing else. I love it. I mean, he is a club killer. I, I'm, I'm DJing. I'm playing all his records. So I, I love it to death. This is my motto with anything. If you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you always got. So my thing is, you know, even for myself, you know, I want to be, you know, God has blessed me to be here and be relevant. I've, my, I've paid my bills three decades straight with music. Wow. I mean, like 30 years, no fall off. And my thing, and the reason why is because I always dare to reinvent myself. I'm not trying to, if you know, because people used to always say, man, I can tell that's a love track. Okay, can you tell now? You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I don't do what I used to do. Wow. You know because, and the only reason is because what I used to do may not work right now. You know, like one of the what? most popular songs I, I, I produce is Big Pokey's uh, Who That Man, Who That Talking Down. Man, now, I could, if I came out with a beat, probably, I'm talking about using the same drums and, and all this kind of stuff like that, the same exact beat, that same track, and drop it tomorrow, it wouldn't have the impact on the industry that it would today because the whole industry When did that come forward. out? Uh, 99. Who That Talking Down? And I'm going to tell you what's crazy. I'm going to tell you what's, I'm gonna tell you what's real crazy. I'm show you how, you know, because I love, I love jammers. You know, you got three stages. I love jam. We all jamming. If, if we wouldn't jamming, we, we wouldn't be trying to do this music anyway. The, the difference is you got jammers, you got hits, and you got classics. That song is a classic. I just got a, what's today, Friday? I just mm -hmm. got a check for who they're talking down Wednesday. I've wow. been getting them since 2000. Hmm. I've been getting royalty checks every 90 days since the year 2000. It did 22 it years. Did. That's, my, that's my point. It didn't been in Dark Angel, Orange is the New Black, um, Entourage, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. You know, I, I, I have three W-2s that I have to fill out for, for, for that song. So, I mean, like, well, the songs and songs alike. You know what I'm saying? Different, different uh, uh, you know, companies and stuff like that, different broadcasting stations and all this kind of stuff like that because of the publishing and all that. My thing is, I have songs that I've made 10 years, you know, uh, since then that the checks then fills it, pretty much fills it out because, you know, they, they didn't get the, the push. The and hype. and they didn't get, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, didn't get, they didn't get the track, traction. You know, tra the traction. That's what I'm trying to say. They didn't get the traction that that song got. So my thing is, I'm in, I'm in this for the, for the hits and the classics. And that's determined, you know, they all can be jamming all they want to. 
but determines the hits and the classics is the success and attraction, like you say in other songs. I'm in it for them. I was what just about? talking about something like that earlier because I was thinking about, remember when I mentioned about um, Michael Jackson? Right. I said everybody's supposed to strive to be like Michael Jackson where hits are concerned because right. Right. this generation or kids, kids going to still know who Michael Jackson is and it... it it just blows my mind that these young kids, I'm like, how you know Michael Jackson? When you were born, he might not even be alive at that time, but you right. know him, right. and your kids going to know him. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what everybody, I think, that. should. Right. It's because of the, the success of his work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, I mean, that your work should outlive you. And I, was, I always, you know, I, that, this is the reason for publishing to begin with. For me, mm -hmm. I always, you know, because I mentor, you know, I'm in the mentor stage now where I mentor these artists, I mentor these producers and all that. I tell them, never get out the car. You never get out, you know, like don't ever, and what I mean by that is never sell all of your rights, you know, or, you know, all of your rights straight up for, you know, whatever, because publishing is good not only for your natural life, but it's good for 70 years after you die. And 70 people, years. 70, seven zero. They, it's good for 70 years after you die. And people, a lot of artists that don't do their homework and don't do their research and all of that, they don't know that. Mm -hmm. So they just trying to hit a quick lick for today. But you, you know, you probably, you probably taking care of somebody's family beyond their own life. Mm -hmm. about, you know what I'm saying? What about uh, Sauce Walker? I'm, I'm in Houston, Texas. So love what, do you, what do you think about the way that they're music and the way that they're doing things? I love them to death because I'm they, just talking about see, these artists, guys. And I'm gonna tell you why. And I'm just saying, you know, and my my deal is I I love all of the new. <laughs> You know, all of the, the new artists that dare to take our music, you know, or whatever. I know y'all getting ready to talk to Propane, but he's one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I love these people that that come in and, and just take it to that next level. I'm just having fun sitting back, seeing, seeing it go, just go to that next level. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's crazy. Like, man, you know, wow, things that we didn't do, somebody else is doing now. And they're going to, you know, and they're going to sit back and see the same thing. I'm going you know to ask you about DJ Chose, too. I'm going to ask you about producers, because that's right. your lane. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, how was, how, how, have you ever uh, worked with DJ Chose or met I, him? I never have. I, one more thing I want to say about Sauce Walker. Come on back with it. Okay. I love also that, you know, like, just like Kiki is doing or whatever, I love how they, they, they take it, the entrepreneurship to the next level and get do the merch thing. I love, the, you know, like, however we can take this and make that, mm -hmm. I'm with that. You know, because it all ties back into, you know. It's a big brand. Growing, well, brand, it's branding. It's branding. Exactly. That's well, all I was saying. I, I just love, I, you know. I want to ask you about DJ Chose, okay. you know. He had a, a soundtrack in the Fast and the Furious, and mm -hmm. he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's got a lot of different things that he mm -hmm. do in a lot of different ways than, than Sauce and then, uh, and, and then, then uh, Beat King. Um, but just these younger generation and them, you you got to be proud of those guys. For oh man, it's indeed, that's indeed. I'm you know I, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm one of the guys that you know like like, the, like they say the OGs or whatever. That I mean, I get with the youngsters and be down with them. You know, I'm like man because I'm you know I'm a music fan first and foremost. I you know I'm DJing in the club, so I'm playing these. I know what's hot out there, or whatever. With you know from my own people that I you know I kick it with. And then I'll either the circles that I'm in or whatever, not you know, I know what's hot out there, or whatever, and, and I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just grateful that they are taking our industry to that next level. Don't let it fizzle out. Don't let it die, or whatever, because there were people before me. So you know, I wanted to be embraced. That's why I embraced, you know, the the, the youngsters, the you know, like they pretty much say like the new Houston, the new sound, you know, whatever, you know, and they like, man, he's one of the pioneers of that Houston sound. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Find it, Danny, but it doesn't have to stay right there. Wow. What, how, what, you know, how y'all gonna update the new sound? Man. You know what I'm saying? You know, the same, you know what I'm saying? You know, I don't. I'm not one of those guys that say the sound had to stay like we we had it. Nah, no, man. I don't even do it do it the same way no more. So, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm not. You know, I'm trying to wherever music is. Okay. I'm. I'm. You know, I don't copy, but I do compete. You know okay. what I'm saying? And, uh, and that's the thing with me. How do you know? Okay. What I was going to... So you still DJ right now? I DJ right now. So, my, okay. You've been doing this for such a long time. Mm -hmm. And when you do this in this business, not everybody going to like you. And you're not going to like everybody. Um, have you ever DJed where an artist that was going to perform or be there, you didn't really fool with, but you had to still DJ his songs? That is... That, that's happened a whole lot of times because my it's not even about the artist at that point. If I'm DJing, it's about the crowd that I'm participating. You know, what I mean that I'm actually uh, serving. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in the crowd that I'm performing for. So 
I've done it so many di- t- different times with that. At that point, it's not, you know, I don't, I'm not one of them guys like, I don't like him, I ain't playing this record. Because I'm not really getting or him. Or try to sabotage him by I'm playing not with his. That. Because I've heard different things. I've heard um, somebody else came on our show and was like, the DJ slowed it down. Yeah. Or the DJ sped it up instead of doing exactly how it's supposed right, to do right. just to try to sabotage. I don't rock like that. Right? Because, okay. number one, I'm an artist myself. I rap, I produce, I, you, know, you know, I engineer, I do it all or whatever. And I'm the last person that wants, you know, that done to me. So I never would do an artist like Even that. Even if you don't like them? No, it, no, it has nothing to do with that. If it's a hit song they have, okay, I'm, uh, I pretty much don't have artists that I don't like anyway, right. you know, because I'm, a, I'm the guy that's going to pull you to the side and see whatever our difference is. Man, let's, let's watch this, especially if I got to see you all the time. That's going to make it uncomfortable for, you know, and awkward for both of us. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and knock that out the book, you know, I mean, knock that out, out the way because we can both probably make money together. Especially if you're a hot artist, mm-hmm. I you're the last person I want to be, you know, like like into it with anyway. What's the so that's that, that that's the thing with me because I want to I want to rock with the crowd. You know, it's about playing for your audience. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what, what, I'll squash that just to make sure that I'm you know I'm hot out there. What's the hottest song, 2022? The hottest song in the club when Ooh. you play it, 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 it erupted the club Turn like up. no other. It's so, I mean, it's- No, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I mean, I, it's- You want man, one song uh, or three songs? I want, yeah, I want, I want so one or three songs. You can do a couple. Uh, <laughs> two, two, two songs. Two songs. Oh this is, we, we, we narrowing it down. This is the end of the year, you man. Know Come the music. on, man. Uh, it's just oh, last, wow. We almost a month out. We're going to be okay. over with this. No, but Let's I mean like- Let's put it in this way. You go to the club and people not vibing with whatever you playing. Like, like what, what's my hot record? And you know that if you play this song, Everybody gonna turn up. Uh, what is that song you pull for? For uh, that hottest preach, song in twenty twenty two. by Young Dolph. I can always, you know, like that can always just, you know, because everybody people missing Young Dolph like that anyway. And I can always, you know, like it just it just turns. You know, a lot of times I use preach to like change the vibe. If I'm I'm, I'm been the rocking line dance, that old do R&B and me or something like that. That whole go hard. Oh uh, yeah, I just use that to flip the script because they know I'm feeling I'm about to come with some trap or drill or what. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm I'm just gonna flip the script with that. You know, no matter how that song being old, by you say a couple of years or whatever. Preach. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. yeah. What about uh, you, you mentioned? Know, but the- but I can rock. I ain't gonna lie, I can, okay, on the daddy's thing, I could bring that big tuck in, because I got a whole daddy set, too. You know what I'm saying? Oh, clip, that's my right. hood. I can start, you know, I can do, do that, do a set. I, yeah. I got a daddy. Even here in Houston my while daddy, you're playing. She, huh? Even in Houston while you're here. Yeah, yeah. And they still yeah, love that. Yeah, Miguel and she just love me. Yeah. I can just, I can just, I can just rock with that. Then they, oh, big yeah. tuck and all them, they killed it. So and Mo3, like, Mo3 was one of the Mo3, oh, Mo3 stopped outside, playing. Outside. Everybody ain't your friend and all that, you know what I'm saying? Even though he got all his other hit songs. But that and... Uh, What's his hottest uh, song to you? Uh, Him and Kevin Gates. I like, like, the, uh, I like that song. Uh, he got some... Man, he got... I like a lot of Mo3. I just, you know, his engineering is unbelievable, though. His engineering is off, is through the rocker. Mm-hmm. I mean, through the roof, you know, it's off the rocker. I mean, like, yeah, his engineering, and what I mean by that, his song, the way the songs is mixed and mastered, because I listen to everything technical, because I'm an engineer myself. Mm. So, wow. Yeah, whoever's, <laughs> whoever's mixing and mastering their songs, they going to work. Wow. Um, so, um, the thing that really sticks out to me is that you, you've you been down here, you've been working, you work with Slim and all these guys, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I've done tracks that Slim, yeah, I've, I've worked with him when yeah. I was with Walsh this yeah. as well, too. So you don't work with yeah. everybody, have there been any people that you hadn't touched down here? Well, I'm getting ready to work with him. <laughs> Pro- propane. With propane. propane. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he really? and I always talk about it now, I'm like, man, I got to give me a propane song, man. That's all, really? that's oh, all. man. Man, because I, I can say I, I love the I love the Houston vibe. What you guys do down here, man! I've been grow. I, I I grew up to it. You Absolutely. Know what I mean? So thank you for everything that you done done. Appreciate man. everything um, as well. How, how how can uh how do people get a hold to you if they're trying to get a hold to you? Um. Well, let me say it like this: on my Instagram is at Harvey Love, and Harvey Love is spelled H A R V E Y L U V, all one word. Harvey Love. Harvey Love. Yes, indeed. Not L O V E. No, no, no. L U V. L U V. L U V. Absolutely. And you look up Harvey Love, you gonna everything is gonna come up because my my number is is actually public information. 
So Harvey, just you, uh, you can just Google Harvey Love and a lot of uh, come up or whatever. So I, w you know, we normally do this, you know, top three um, artists, artists of all time, dead or alive, any okay. genre. Okay. So I'm trying to think. Do I want to do? Pro do we want to do producer of all time or do we want to do artist of all times? Which one, babe? It's gonna be by producer of all yes. time or artist of all time. Um, I, I would say artist. Let's just let's just do top three. It's gonna be Scarface. It's gonna be. Oh, he already guessed. It's gonna be Scarface. He already guessed. Number here. one. No, because he said it earlier. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number two. Uh, number two. Uh, it's gonna be uh, um, K. Reno. If you know, are we going are we going rappers? Or are we no, going singers? Any genre. Any genre. Okay. Top three oh artists of all time. Okay. Any genre. It, it's hard. And you got to cut it down to three. It's, Everybody's done it. Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, is Scarface still your number one? Since it's any genre. I'm just I'm, trying to put it out there. Yes. He's one. Uh, but. I, I, number uh, two. Number two. Okay. No, 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 no. He's not one. Oh. No, he's one of them. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. no, no, no I need your number one. No, nobody, no, nobody is more talented to me. Than that. Michael Jackson. Okay, Michael Jackson is number one. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, and and my thing is, is, is I'm doing a disservice Not even Chris to Brown? Prince. No, no, no. We yeah. already know. Yeah, I seen Chris I would even Brown question and yeah, I dance him. I'm talking about. And if you give, okay, give Chris who Brown will his I'll heyday. Dance, who will I dance? Who? I think Michael Jackson will I dance Chris Brown in his heyday. I ain't saying like <laughs> Michael Jackson was cold. He was. I'm talking about like he he popped. He did it all. I mean, he was 25, cold. Like, but these young niggas are different. different kind different. of dances that are that come in style. Well, now. if you look today, dancing is dancing. You know I mean, because you have so much, you know, you got battle dancing, you got, I mean, like, it's so many. I'm in, and I'm in, man, I'm, so I'm just. Who's, who's number, number two? two? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Come on. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, face, I'm uh, facing Michael Jackson. Okay. Number but three. But it's got to number be three. another. Number three. Lord have mercy. Number three. Uh, uh, okay. Oh my God! See, you listen to a whole genre you're saying, of music. Uh, say, Tell to the most singing. Is it because that's that's this so is wide. your top three? I know it's very wide. Your top three, whatever your reasons are that you put it all around. Top three, all around, whatever. Oh my God! Whether it brings okay. back your childhood or whether it, you okay. know that's the person you put. I'm gonna just in. say uh, face. <laughs> Michael Face. I, I cannot not Michael say three. Prince. Okay, Prince. Michael Face. I got to yeah, say Prince because 27 can't. instruments. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You, are, you already knew where I was going. This man knew how to Michael. play 27 instruments. I mean, self taught. You see, and can sing. I'm talking about, had, had an eight part harmony. As long as we've been doing this, everybody's done, a lot of people have done Michael Jackson, but it's always Tupac right behind it. <sighs> Tupac ain't better than Prince. I, and he, my, he one of my goats. He better than Prince. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, let me let me. What we talking about? <laughs> he gonna play that. <laughs> we gonna ride out to this track. Let me see what I got here. See if I got. That's it. <laughs> hey, I did that like an hour and a half before we came. I'm just vibing. That's the song. I'm just vibing the studio. Uh uh. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna steal that album and put that album on my dude. How long did it take you? Like, oh, I'm stealing that one. How long did it take you to make it? Yeah, that's hard, man. How long did it take you to make one, make something like that? I, I did that bit, it's probably an hour and a half. Oh. With it. That's why you get paid. That's why you get paid. <laughs> I just freed I just, I was just vibing on it. This is what happened. I was vibing on that uh, Alexander O'Neill yesterday. Mm. And so when I, I was like, man, I'm gonna do that tomorrow, whatever. Mm. You know, I would have did it yesterday, but I was just, you know, busy. I was busy. Oh yeah, I was getting busy, whatever. But I just went on and did it today. Mm. Wow. And, yeah, I just went on and Man, thank you so much, man, bro. Appreciate y'all. Hey, man. man. It's That's love, a, bro. All oh, we love. Yes, man. yes indeed. Yes, man, yes, indeed. hey man. Say man, we love you, brother. Oh man, love y'all right back, man. Say, I appreciate man. It. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, <laughs> man. Boss Talk Harvey Love Stop We Down here in Houston, Texas, man. Absolutely. What a boss's talk. Yes, yes sir. sir.